Oh my good Lord, long awaited live with my mother who's Marsha Karp, psychodramatist, psychotherapist. Here we are together, we're going to be live, yes we are, to share what we know. This is pretty special I would say, mother and daughter, whatever it might be between us, I'm just sharing uh, this on my other pages so that we can be here, share what we know, uh, answer questions if you're so inclined or you may just want to be here and share with us. I think this is pretty extraordinary. Do you know ever uh, of a live um, in any forum, mother and daughter, psychodramatist, psychotherapist rather, forgive me, I'm a psychologist, psychotherapist and a coach and a human and we're just going to talk. It's going to be wonderful. Uh, that's if I can not share the wrong thing on my pages. Hello, hello. So let me just discard that. Give me a second. Oh, my word. It's quite a feat to make this happen in a big way. This has been a challenge to get us together and line it up. Copy link. So give me a minute to just mess about because I'd love to share this with as many of us as I can. So invite your friends. This should be wonderful. The intention here is just to share what we know uh, together and be together. What works for whom in this thing called life? What's useful to us? What's not? What's painful? What's not? Where is she? Bring her on camera. Hmm. Here we go. Add. Let's see. Are we doing it? I do hope so. Good Lord, this has been a challenge. Wait for it, wait for it. So get your questions ready. If you have a question about anything, we it's not necessarily that we'll know, but we'll do our absolute best to love on you, share with you, uh, point you in the right direction between us. What is mum? Hello. <laughs> hooray, hooray, we did it. Phenomenal. I'm just checking that we shared this. Double, double checking. We did it! Hooray! Can you hear? I think so, yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, fantastic. I was thinking about this as I was running and thinking, ha ha, you get to be Poppy's mum. I get and I get to be Marsha's daughter. I've been Marsha's daughter for most of my life. Now you get to be Poppy's mum and Marsha, and I get to be me, and we get to share everything and <laughs> cross-pollinate our wonderful friends and share what we know. Up for it? Yeah, yeah. I've been Poppy's mum for 41 years. I've been Marsha's daughter for 41 years. And I'm 76. And we survived it. You're 76? Oh, wow. I've been saying you're 75. Are you sure? I was born in 1942. Oh, that's why. This is my math. Oh, forgive me. Oh, so you're quite an old lady then. How is it to be here? My dad used to say, you're only as young as the woman you feel. Well, I would agree with your father. Yes. Jack. So, I'm sure gazillions of people know you, but just in case people don't know us, shall we say a little bit about who we are and what we are? Sure. Want to go first? I'm Poppy's mum. <laughs> what do you do? What are you about? What drives you? Um, well, I love my work. I've been a psychotherapist um, 55 years. Since I was 23, I trained with Jacob Moreno in psychodrama in New York. And um, then I came to Britain when I was 31, and I married your papa, Ken Sprague, and then we set up the Holwell International Center for Psychodrama and Sociodrama on a 12th century farm in Devonshire, southwest England. And Zerka Moreno... Dr. Moreno's wife, 25 years younger, started coming to us every year for 20 years, and we became international because she came. So we had people from Africa, all over the world. All the guy from Africa said he used to come just to have my bread because I made 45 loaves of bread a week. And he said, you think I'm coming for this psychodrama stuff? I'm just coming to eat your bread. <laughs> <laughs> it 
was good. I call that fried lunch best. 45 loaves a week I used to make puppy. Good Lord. Because, I don't remember that. Yeah, well, because it is three. I remember the smell. Three, three, three loaves of bread for breakfast, three loaves for lunch, because we, we, we had 25 people around our table. Well, we could sleep 25 people in our farm. But when Zerka came, sometimes we had to bed and breakfast them to the local neighbor farmers with a bus that brought them and took them there and back and so on. Brought that fit. Yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah. And then it, when we had two tables in the kitchen, do you remember? So there would be like 35 people for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I had to make all these, um, you know, I had to have bread for everybody and they loved my bread. Yeah, it was good. And do you remember when you you taught it in home economics food class at school? Do you remember you taught all the kids how to make challah bread? I taught the kids how to make letters in Hebrew because they were calling a, uh, yeah. names. And I thought, okay, we'll make, because I was doing. They were calling me Yid, 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 Yid. Yeah. So, so, so I was good at bread sculpture. I could make a tortoise with a lettuce in his mouth and things like that and a mermaid. I knew how to do bread sculptures, so I thought I'll take the bread thing to the school and teach the kids how to make bread. And they all made Hebrew letters, and we baked them. And then I said what each letter meant on the board, and they said, "I've got a hay, and I've got a this," and then they, it was fun, you know. And they never did it again, did they? No, they loved it. Yeah, and they knew what Yiddish meant after that, rather than and I also business. and I also did bread sculpture at a school for extraordinary children. Satish Kumar had a wonderful school called the Little School in Heartland, and we taught. I taught them math with bread sculpture. They all had a dough. We all made the dough together, and then I would say three thousand six hundred and forty. Get there any way you want to, and they would make three thousand six hundred and thirty-nine plus one, and they do it in dough, or they would divide it, or, and we'd bake them, and then we'd discuss the, the sums and stuff. Wow. That was fun. Particularly because... Yeah. I, loved, I loved him, Satish Kumar. I saw him on Gaia on a movie recently uh, about emotion. Uh, he just popped up. There he was, being his beautiful self. Yeah, I saw them I, but about a year ago maybe two years ago, he gave a lecture at the London School for Economics. You know, he's the editor of Resurgence magazine, which is an international magazine about saving the planet. And uh, he was extraordinary. And then June Mitchell, his wife, came and stayed with me the night. And we went to dinner, the three of us, with a monk. They had a monk that was staying with them in Heartland. And so we all went to dinner. And then I think she came to my house and we had lots of fun. Yeah. He's an what extraordinary he, man. He, I really like him very much. And his wife. And his kids, actually. What would you say your mission is? Oh, the, to be the best me I can be. To remain human and not to uh, up myself. And not up yourself. How's that going? <laughs> <laughs> I think I have to go back to the drawing board, puppy. <laughs> <laughs> this woman, you're out. I mean, you're out the closet, mother. This woman's birthday's every day of the year. Oh, only, That's only for the last 10 years. Oh, only. Oh, sorry, of course, yeah. But That's I, pretty, you're the original gangster diva, I reckon, your birthday. Well, every do you know, day. on the way to Madrid, yes, uh, Friday, I had champagne before takeoff, before takeoff, yeah. They apologized, it was a bit late because it was just as we were taking off. Then, I got a first class cake. <laughs> what is the first class cake? They gave me a cake from first class. Oh, right. Okay, fine. You get it. And Because it was your birthday, presumably. Yes, I say it as I get on the plane. Can you imagine what it's like to be 76? How old are you? 23? Oh, my God, I could fit six of you inside me. Ha, ha, ha. <coughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And they love it. And, and, and Gulf Air, Gulf Air, the captain, the whole crew signed it, and they gave me perfume from Duty Free.
So it's kind of compulsive lying, but actually the world benefits because everybody gets happy to be around you and celebrate and you share and you make people talk. And whenever I've been on a flight with you, like the flight knows each other by the time they get off. Oh, this time there was a lady next to me from Uruguay, Uruguay. And she had 500 kids there. She's teaching them English from, uh, guess where she, guess where she lived in, she lived in Mexico and guess where she knew Puerto Vallarta, where Bobby lived, my brother. And she knew Punta Mita, where my Bobby lived. I mean, unbelievable. And I, yeah. I never met anybody from uh, Uruguay. I get off the airplane. And I'm running for the London plane, which is my want, you know. And I met a lady and she says, I'm going to London too. I'm from Uruguay. I met two oh, people from God. Uruguay in, the, in, in 15 minutes. I met two people from Uruguay. Wow. And, uh, what does that mean? Well, that's what I said. And she said, maybe you have to go to Uruguay. Yeah, maybe there'll be people from Uruguay on the live here that invite you to speak. Yeah. Then the girl next to me was a cool kid. She was coming to London to live from Madrid, but she's Italian and she's helping rich people invest their money. And she's only 23 or something and she's getting a, a flat in Knightsbridge. They're paying for her. Wow. They're paying for her. Amazing. And, and she's going to work at one of these big banks and everything. I said, you could take my five quid and invest it for me if you want. <laughs> Oh, wow. But we celebrated my birthday. I had champagne again. The lady brought um, kava to my uh, desk. And uh, uh, kava, I don't like it. And this kava was delicious. Coming back from Madrid last night, yeah. Delicious kava. Well, well done. And then well, in, in Madrid, we celebrated my birthday every day. And then yesterday, before I left... I had a birthday celebration with a woman from Uruguay. Oh my God, Uruguay. That's the third one. Oh really? Yeah, she, she, she lives in Paris and she had a, a friend who was a neurologist and the three of us went to a monastery which was completely uh, full. I told them it was my birthday, could they let us in anyway? She said no. So we went to a cathedral next door because she said her mom used to love the cathedral and we went there we the priest did all his smoky things and then do you know what he did Poppy? he asked us all in spanish but we to shake hands with everybody in front of us and behind us next to us and we all said hello to each other and i thought there's god and then there's people where you live and i liked that that was nice you know be friendly with who you are with not never mind the god thing <laughs> yes <laughs> wow that's wonderful. Then we went out. We, we, we went to a cafe outside. It was so hot. Calor, calor in Madrid. Hot, hot. And um, we had cheesecake. And the uh, man who does the serving, he apologized. He thought he could find a candle. He couldn't. So the man, the neurologist, put, he lit a lighter. And we had the cake and the lighter. We took a picture of the flame. And we sang happy birthday. Then the waiter came back out, apologized, and brought a toothpick, and he lit it on my cheesecake. He lit the toothpick, and then we left. So Katya is saying, is it your birthday, Marsha? So what's your response to that one? Today. <laughs> Classic. Oh, my word. Anyway, it's wonderful. Oh, my God. What an amazing life lesson, says Chris. Life every day, live every day like it's your birthday. Well, Love it. I'll yeah. Tell you something. I'll tell you something, Poppy, but I don't want to cry. But if I because well, why don't you want to cry? Well, I'll tell you later. Well, it's too late now. We're on Facebook Live. You're already doing it. Well, what, what, what's the problem if you cry? Everybody on both sides of my family were killed. Not everybody, but a lot of them in the pogroms and in Auschwitz and so on. And one day I decided... Uh,
Mum, it's all right to cry. This is the world we're in, right? Pain is pain. Everybody gets it. Well, none of them could celebrate anymore. Okay. So you celebrate for them. What a wonderful thing to do, Mum. You celebrate in their honour, right? And your own, obviously. But also, I think it makes people happy when you walk on an airplane and you say, it's my birthday. They all go smiling. And... It's nice. It's, it's a win-win, you know? Mm. Plus the fact in Kiev, they, I lectured for four hours to PhD students, master students. The, the lady had, couldn't pay me anything. So I said to my friend, call Olga, tell her it's my birthday tomorrow. So... I get there in Kiev University, and she she had a big orchid plant on her on her desk. I thought, oh, that's for me because I'm an orchid freak. So she takes me to the students, eighty five. Oh, I've lost sound. I don't know about you guys. Why is that? Bear with us. Can you see and hear both of us? Put a one in the box if you can see and hear both of us. How bizarre. You're frozen on my end, Mum. Sound on Marsha, yeah, I thought so. Oh, she's gone. She'll come back. This is this is how we roll in my family. <laughs> She'll come back. Isn't she remarkable, big style? Yeah. Where are you, mother? Come back. So have some questions in mind if you'd like to ask us questions. Why not? She's a psychodramatist, psychotherapist, a human. So she'll be back in a minute, I'm sure. I don't know what that's about. It might just be reception or something in London. So nice to see you. Please do share the video. What a wonderful thing, don't you think? Celebrate. Celebrate our existence every day. I heard, who was it? Mo, gosh, I forget his last name now. Mo something, incredible speaker in London. He said every day above ground is win-win. That's how he wakes up in the morning, jumps out of bed. Here she is again. Hooray. <laughs> She's coming back. Spinning. Mm. Hello. Hi. Hi. Somebody rang my telephone and it looked like it was from India. Okay. Well, that's going to probably happen quite a lot. Anyway, what I was going to say was in Kiev, I got there. She presented me in front of the 85 students, the orchids. They sang happy birthday in Russian for me. And then we began the workshop. It was four hours. Very nice. I got on the plane. She gave me a Armenian cognac before I left and everything and... I like Armenian cognac. It's it's like honey and melted butter with a little alcohol going down your throat. It's very nice. And um, I got on the plane. I opened the envelope. I thought it was a birthday um, card. And it was $100. And it's more than my friend got teaching at the University of Kiev. Then they wanted to make me a professor because the students liked it and stuff. And then David rang me, my phone brother from Florida, and he said, do you know you're in the same neighborhood as Grandpa David was when he was starving? He couldn't eat, so he joined the Russian army in 1908 to get three meals a day. Who? My Grandpa David. Okay. I don't know Grandpa David. Your, your great-grandpa. Okay. My, my mom's dad joined the Russian army at 18 years old in Kiev to get three meals a day. And he lived in the same neighborhood as I was teaching in Kiev. And I thought we were from Minsk. I didn't know I was from there. And then uh, she got $100 in the envelope and I made more money in his neighborhood than he did three, two generations before. And I didn't even know I was in the right neighborhood because I'd been working in Moscow and by accident, there was a lady in my group from Kiev, Ina Didkovska. 
Wow. And then, and then, no, it gets worse. Then I get back to K K Kiev. Oh, yeah, K Kiev another time because I worked there three times a year. And that man, we played the played it out what this is the story in Psychodrome. And they said, had my, oh, my grandpa got a gun in the army and he shot the Tsar's horse one night by mistake because he was guarding the army camp at 18. He didn't know what to do with the rifle. And they said, if there was a noise, shout, Shtoy, stop, halt. Three times. And in the third time, they don't stop, shoot your gun. He shot his gun in the middle of the night and he shot the Tsar's horse by mistake. It was so secret, Tsar Nicholas II came in the night to inspect the army camp, but they didn't even tell my grandpa, who had a rifle for the first time in his arms and he, he was guarding the camp. So my grandpa did what they said, he shot his gun and he shot the Tsar's horse by mistake. They arrested my grandpa, took him to Siberia, and he escaped before or during Siberia and, and walked to Italy and came to America in 1908 on a ship. And what they told me in Kiev was, had he stayed in Russia, it said he stayed there that year, Tsar Nicholas II, the very man who horse, horse he shot, they assumed it was an assassination. It wasn't, it was a missing of the gun. Tsar Nicholas II, 1908, killed 200,000 Jews that year. So had he not done the accident, by mistake, shot the horse and got arrested, I wouldn't exist. You wouldn't exist. So th because of the Tsar's horse, I'm American. <laughs> <laughs> My brain just exploded. I've heard this before, but even so, good Lord. Now, let me just say something. Well, I have to say something. For some reason, I don't know if you can see this, but this is what we look like to other people. <laughs> And I'm sure What's the matter? We're, half of us is showing and half of us isn't, which has got to be symbolic in some way. So one of us, <laughs> some weird things happening. So my suggestion would be that we come off and come back on again. Um, okay. Do so I hang up? Are you, wait, before you do, are you sure that your phone is off lock? Because it, it yeah. might just... I think that's symbolism, personally. I'm on the side. Should I turn it upside down the other way, then? Well, but it, it might be, I don't know. Yeah, try it that way. Let's see what happens. No. I think some that something weird's going on. Let's come off. We'll come back on again and see what happens. Where do you hang up, then? Um, I'll do it for us. We'll see what happens with it. Okay? Okay. <laughs> 